Hey guys, welcome to part 2 of the injector and cup replacement video on D13. To reinstall a cup, you need these tools. I think I already showed this in the previous video. This tool and this tool are the expensive ones to get. You may be able to rent them. Okay. You begin by getting this. And you want to insert this metal pin into it. Unscrew this bolt all the way. You want to unscrew this bolt about this far. Now you want to put the injector cup on the tool. It just slides on like this. Then you get your pin. This pin goes through here. And it threads into here as you can see I have the pen all the way in once you have it screwed down all the way with your hand you want to turn it back just a little bit now you can put your o-ring on what you have here the o-ring just slides over the top and goes into this groove here. Next you need extreme pressure lube. This goes over the tip of the pin here. You want to make sure you have extreme pressure uh, lube here because if you don't this tip may break off inside your engine. As you can see I got that on there now. Now you can tighten down this bolt here. Once you have that nut tightened down, the injector cup will no longer move on this, so you can do the rest of your steps. For the next step, you need this right here. Sealer, the part number is on it right here. This goes on the seat of the injector here. Right down here, all around it. You want to put a thin layer all around the injector cup just like this. Next you want to put some oil on this o-ring here. As you can see I have some oil there now. Um, you can use soap or coolant also, that's what the uh, manual, the owner's manual, or the manufacturer's instructions say to do because they say the o-ring will swell with the oil but if you're doing this as a quick quickly the o-ring will not swell and I think it will actually be good for it when the o-ring swells once you put the cup in we haven't had any problems so far so once you're ready to install your injector cup you want to make sure your bore is perfectly clean down there as you can see Then you can slide your cup into there with the tool. Be careful to keep it straight while you're doing this. To keep it straight, you can also put an O-ring right here on this uh, little ridge here also. Help keep it straight, but then it's difficult to pull out. Once it's about this far in, you just need to push it down a little bit and it stops right there and then you just push it the rest of the way. Now you can use the injector hold down to torque this down. You want to use your new bolt right away. Then you torque it down to 60 pounds. And you want to go about 10 degrees past once you get to zero or 60 pounds. You want to go about 10 to 15 degrees past it because these are stretchable bolts. Once you have that done, you can start pulling this pin out. Let's do that. You could put a 13 millimeter wrench on this, but it usually slips, so I use an adjustable wrench. It's much bigger. It fits better onto there. 
Um, so first you put on your 24 millimeter wrench on here and then your adjustable wrench and you can rest it against the cap there and just start turning this. When you start getting near the end, you start loosening up and it gets easy to turn. Then you can take this wrench off, this one, and your tool will come out. And there you have it, your cup is in. You want to leave this end until you're ready to put in your new injector. Once you're ready to put in your injector, you need some of this graphite paste here. Ours comes with our kits from the dealer. You put the paste right on the edge here, all around there. As you can see, I have the graphite paste on there. And then you want to put some oil on this O-ring and it's ready to go in. As you see, I have the oil on the O-ring. Now you're ready to take this tool out here and then slide your injector in. When you're ready to put in your, your new injector, <clears throat> you want to put the hold down onto the injector before you slide it in, otherwise you won't be able to get it in later. Once your injector is in place, most of the way, you center this and then you push it down the rest of the way, then it'll pop. And then now it's in, you can torque it down. Torquing it to 60 pounds again. Once you get to 60, you want to go a few degrees past that, and that's it. Your injectors are in. You do that for the other six injectors. As you see, I already have all of them in. Once you're done with all your injectors, you're ready to put your rocker arms back in. Before you start putting the rocker arm in, you want to recheck all, all your bolts here and make sure they're all torqued down to 60 pounds. Um, you also want to make sure that you didn't forget to, to put oil on any of your O-rings on the injector cup or the injector. Uh, otherwise they might tear on installation. You don't want to forget your uh, glue on the bottom and your graphite paste also. Once your rocker arm is ready to come down, um, you want to install the injector bridges the intake bridges I mean sorry intake valve bridges but you want to leave the exhaust valve bridges off for now then you can pull down your rocker arms once your rocker arms are in place you want to put in these cylinders you want to clean them off and put clean oil onto them slide them in and then you can put your uh, bridge in place I think it's easy to do uh, another way you can do this you can put these in before you put the rocker arms down and get a rubber band or something to hold them in place Um, you might want to release this angle iron before you start doing that because these don't move and it'll be more difficult to do it like that. Once that's off, your rock arm move easily you can put your put that cylinder in place and once that's in place your bridge should go in pretty easy as you can see the cylinder and bridge are both in place now and you do that for the other six and then you can torque down your rocker arms Again, you want to make sure all your cylinders go back in the same rocker arm that they came out of. Once that's in, you can start putting your bolts in. 
and just twist this a little bit and they will all slide in then you can start torquing them down you want to start from the inside out um, you do these first the inside the closer to the in, uh, truck part uh, bolt on each pair so this one this one this one this one you want to tighten those down to 44 pounds including the 18 millimeter bolt back here I'm doing them a little bit I Starting from the inside of the rock arm shaft, going to 44 pounds. You want to tighten that last bolt also down to 44 pounds. Alright, once you have these torqued down to 44 pounds, you can start torquing the front ones down to uh, 20 pounds, not including that big one. Okay, once you have them torqued down to 20 pounds, you want to do, you want to tighten them, angle tighten them another 120 degrees. Okay, that's 120 degrees. Make sure you don't put foot pounds there. It ends up being about 75 foot pounds, but you still want to angle tighten it. Okay, once you have these front ones tightened down to 20 foot pounds plus 120 degrees, that's only these, the front one of each pair, you can go ahead and loosen the back one. Once you've loosened those, you want to tighten them down to 20 pounds. One thing I forgot to mention, you don't want to loosen this one. You tightened it to 44 foot pounds in the beginning, you want to leave it like that until you start angle tightening these. 
Now you want to angle tighten these rear ones to 120 degrees also. Once you've done those rear ones, that rear, the big one, 18 millimeter one back there, you want to go ahead and angle tighten that one. It's already at 44 pounds from the beginning, as you remember. You want to tighten it down another 120 degrees. Um, that's 55. All right, I had to get my larger torque wrench for this one. Go ahead and do that 120 pounds. Sorry, that's 120 degrees. It ends up being about 180 foot pounds. Once your rocker arms are torqued down, you're ready to put everything else back together. You want to put some new O-rings on your engine brake valve here, here, and here. And it just goes in like that. Be careful not to tear your O-ring while you're pushing it in there. As you can see, this pretty much in right there. And then you can screw this in. I think these bolts are about, I think they were 20 foot pounds if I'm not mistaken. Once that's in, you can go ahead and connect it as the one with the two pin connector. It goes to the valve there. And then you can go ahead and reconnect all your injectors. Once those are in, you want to zip tie your wires. There's a spot here, here, on top of the valve and back in the back of the engine. You don't want to put these in yet because your next step is to do the overhead adjustment on your engine, which you can watch in one of my, one of my other videos. So the next thing you do, you want to write down the numbers of your injectors. You're looking at this second number down below here. This number is going to need to be programmed into the ECM on your computer. You can either write down those numbers or take a picture of them and then uh, program them or you can take the, your numbers with you to a shop and let them know which injector it is and they'll program it for you. We also do that. We charge about $80 and we're located in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Without programming, the truck is still drivable, but it might have a rough idle or not get good fuel economy and such. So that's it. Next step is to do your valve adjustment and you will be done. Thanks for watching.